just here for you so you can see what 1,200 people actually look like. That ad was paid for, however reluctantly, by the tobacco industry. The famous body bags ad and others like it were part of a multi-billion dollar legal settlement that tobacco companies paid out over the harm done to regular people by those companies' products. The tobacco industry tried and failed to stay out of the debate over cigarettes. Their attempt at creating a heat shield was a fake group they made up called the National Smokers Alliance, with talk show host Morton Downey Jr. for a spokesman before he got lung cancer and repented. The public saw through it. Everybody knew it was the companies operating a front group. Their heat shield failed to shield them, and the tobacco industry itself got held accountable. They were forced to change. So it didn't work for them. But trying that as a strategy makes some sense, right? I mean, if you're an industry that sells a product that kills people, if your profits depend on the continued or increased sales of something that kills Americans, the strategy of having somebody else stand up for you so it doesn't have to be you in the debate, that strategy is not dumb. That strategy can work. And here is what it looks like when it works. Wayne LaPierre of the National Rifle Association testifying before Congress after the shootings at Sandy Hook Elementary. And of course, it is the NRA sitting there testifying in 2013 instead of the gun makers. It's the equivalent of the made-up National Smokers Alliance sending Morton Downey Jr. to testify in the 90s instead of the cigarette makers. It's the same strategy. It's the same tactic. The modern National Rifle Association is a tool funded by the gun industry to take the public heat on this issue so the companies themselves don't have to. Consider the names on just this list of NRA corporate partners. Names like Beretta and Brownells and Benelli and Sturm Ruger and Winchester and on and on. The NRA represents itself as a grassroots group, just gun owners standing up for gun owners' rights. But they are a gun industry group, funded by the industry that makes guns because those companies want the anti-gun reform side of the argument to be argued by somebody other than themselves. They put the NRA out there so the people who profit off selling guns don't have to themselves be identified as the source of the argument that gun sales can't be restricted in any way. The NRA is propped up and funded by the industry to make that case from a gun rights perspective instead of a protect my business perspective. And they're put out there to take all of the criticism and all the attention so the industry doesn't have to. And that is why since December 14th, since those shootings at Sandy Hook Elementary School, the industry that makes its money selling guns has been largely invisible. But Wayne LaPierre and the NRA, they are everywhere by design. For the companies, for the gun manufacturers, invisibility means their strategy is working. It's the exact same tactic now that was used by the tobacco industry then. The National Smokers Alliance exists for one purpose to defend the individual freedoms of 50 million adult Americans who choose to smoke. It's on behalf of those millions of decent, hardworking, law-abiding citizens that I'm here today to give voice to their concerns. That is a lonely, and it is in fact, a frequently reviled position. We will not be demonized. 50 million individual citizens and taxpayers whose relationship with the tobacco industry consists of purchasing a legal product. The incursions on their rights have gone really more than far enough. For God's sake, leave the good and honest, decent, law-abiding people all over this country alone. The new taxes on cigarettes... Are we going to have a lazy tax, a fat tax, uh, some kind of regulation on that? It's a scary area. What they are serious about is banning, taxing, and taking what they want. We already have over a million members, well over a million members. We at the NRA are now nearly five million strong. One of the comments I hear most commonly, both from our members and from people in general, is I don't smoke, but I think it's gone far enough. I'm very concerned about this trend. I think that smokers have rights. The vast majority of the American people are behind us. They don't have the right to take that right away. What the tobacco industry tried in the 1990s and failed is the same thing the gun industry is doing right now to us right now. Only now, this industry, the gun industry, they are succeeding. Here's one specific way you know they're succeeding. As Congress moves forward right now with what they believe can be done, or at least should be considered as potential gun reforms after Newtown, what's on that list? 
making gun trafficking a federal offense. That passed out of committee today in the Senate. It only got one Republican vote, but still it passed. Also funding schools to upgrade their school safety measures if they want to. Also universal background checks, so not just some people who buy guns get background checks, but everybody does. And a ban on some specific military-style weapons, including limits on high-capacity magazines. That's the agenda, right? One of the ways you know the gun industry strategy is working, the strategy of keeping themselves out of the debate and out of the limelight, one of the ways you know that's working is that what's not on Congress's rather modest list about how to reform gun laws after Newtown is anything at all about the companies that sell guns. Cigarettes kill people, right? Tobacco industry got sued for their product killing people and them lying about it. Those lawsuits turned up dramatic evidence of what the companies had done wrong, Companies got hauled before Congress to answer for it. Their product got regulated. The companies paid big time, and now a heck of a lot fewer Americans smoke. And now a lot of those companies are more focused on how many Chinese people they can get smoking instead of how many Americans they can get smoking, because frankly, it is a harder sell here. The gun companies also make a product that kills people. But the gun companies cannot be sued for that. Congress in 2005 passed a specific law to give gun companies immunity from lawsuits for how their products get used. That's not on the agenda to maybe be repealed or discussed? However much Wayne LaPierre howls and kicks about Hollywood and video games and law-abiding target shooting enthusiasts and protecting your family at the end of the world, the fight against gun reform is not really about that. It is about the gun makers who want to keep selling as many guns as possible and who therefore fund the NRA. They pay old Wayne to howl and kick as loudly and distractingly as possible. It is all about protecting the gun makers from becoming the focus themselves. This week, Republicans in the Senate filibustered a nominee for the U.S. Appeals Court in Washington, D.C. That court's sort of the minor leagues for the Supreme Court. As federal judgeships go, a seat on this appeals court is very important. The nominee is named Caitlin Halligan. She's white, widely seen as qualified for the job. Qualification for the job is not why Republicans blocked her nomination. This is why they blocked her nomination. Quoting Senate Republicans, in New York versus Sturm and Ruger, a New York state court case, Ms. Halligan argued that gun manufacturers created, maintained, and contributed to a public nuisance of illegal handguns in the state. A solicitor general of New York, Ms. Halligan vigorously advanced a specious legal theory attempting to hold gun manufacturers liable. Gun manufacturers will not be held liable for the products they sell. And they will not argue that publicly. They will not argue publicly that they just want to keep selling them no matter what. That would look bad. So they have the NRA to do it for them, and they stay in the shadows. At bottom, this is gun makers protecting themselves from we the people turning on them. It's just heat shield politics. It did not work for the cigarette manufacturers, and they got held accountable, and the country changed because of it, and a lot more Americans are alive because of that. It is working right now for the gun manufacturers, and they are not being held accountable so far. But maybe that can change.